Hello, my beautiful friends. I am Laurel Bleeden Maffei with Illuminating Souls, welcoming you to this episode of Sleepy Bedtime Blessings, a podcast designed to help you rest, relax, and fall asleep. And I just left. That was a little giggle that escaped me because just as I said that, One of the birds in the neighborhood also decided to say hello. (laughs) As I record this, it is early morning here and the birds are getting their day started. So you may hear some ambient noise as we move through this episode. Oh, it's a blue jay. It's now perched right on the fence outside of my window. And to me, blue jays have always symbolized happiness. They always feel like really good medicine from the universe. So I share that with you. And if we're meeting for the first time, (laughs) I am an angelic practitioner, a spiritual teacher, and an encourager of souls. And because this is the work that I do, I find magic (laughs) in the appearance of a blue jay at a beautiful serendipitous moment here with you. In the work that I do, I have some wonderful offerings you may be interested in at some point. I offer one-on-one angel sessions, which are simply lovely. And we meet over the phone and we have conversation and I channel messages from the angels for you. And I also offer one-on-one soul mentoring, or as one of my friends now calls it, angel mentoring. I love that. So thank you, my friend, for that beautiful name for the work that we do. And with soul mentoring, or angel mentoring, as I will refer to it here right now, we get together every week and help you move through a time of awakening or transition or healing, whatever is present for you. And then I offer a wide variety of classes that are here to inspire you. Almost always my classes are small in size. It's just the way things work out. So I typically have anywhere between four and eight people, sometimes up to 10 in a class, and we meet over Zoom. And what that means is you really get to be loved and supported and mentored in a very intimate way. You're not just a person in the back of the room left to your own devices. You really get to participate in a very sweet community experience. And I love facilitating classes. And it would be a blessing to have you join us. There's always something new coming up about every six weeks or so. I'm just cooking up my next offering, which will probably start in the middle of March. And so if you're interested, just please make sure you're on my mailing list which you can find at my website, illuminatingsouls.com. And for now, the angels and I are going to spend about the next hour or so with you. We're going to bring forward beautiful, loving, light-filled energy for you. And if you are preparing for sleep, will bring to you lots of soothing, cozy, soft, sweet energies for you. And I know some of you listen during your waking hours. So however you choose to use this episode, you are in my heart and you have my blessing. And because this is designed to be a sleep podcast, there will be no loud noises. We will 
stick to topics that are gentle on the heart. So I won't be talking about politics or the news of the day or anything super scary. I will be talking to you in a rather slow and rambling tone. This podcast by design is meant to be a little bit interesting and even maybe a little bit dull because I find as someone who listens to a sleep podcast every single night that I don't want something too riveting. I have on occasion tried listening to an audiobook to fall asleep, but I find I get so frustrated when I fall asleep and then I can't remember what happens. And then I have to try and go back and figure out where I dozed off. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about that here. You won't miss anything, I promise. And I'll also always put in the show notes when story time happens. So if the angels aren't your thing, you can always fast forward to story time. And I guess this is where I tell you that this podcast is really in two parts. We have the first part that we're in now, where I share the intention of the podcast with you, and I bring in the angels, and I invite you to rest. And this part usually is somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Then the second part is story time. And story time can be just about anything. I can read to you from something that's in the public domain. I might share with you stories of my own life. And then there's also what we're going to be doing in this episode, where I'm going to be flipping through the pages of an old TV guide from 1976 and doing a little bit of going in the Wayback Machine and scanning our memory, or my memory, I should say, and also sharing some stories that spontaneously pop up as I flip through the pages. So again, might interest you, might put you to sleep. Win-win either way. <laughs> so I invite you to get comfortable in your body. And take some nice deep breaths in and out, allowing yourself to receive the love that the angels are bringing forward for you now. The angels are divine celestial beings. And when they bring forward this beautiful love, I find it to be deeply comforting and soothing. There is nothing you need to do in this moment. Just allow yourself to receive. And I love the ritual of calling the angels in with you, even though they're already here. So I'm going to invite you to again, just take some deep breaths in and release as we call ourselves forward into the heart of God and beautiful angels on high, I invite you to join us here. I ask that you bring forward waves of beautiful, golden, divine light in service to each of our beloveds here. I thank you for inviting us into this sanctuary of love so that each one of us might receive exactly what is needed in this moment. And angels, I ask that you bring forward waves of comfort, waves of healing, and waves of inspiration, helping to clear from our energy fields anything that is not ours, 
and anything that is not serving our highest and best good. And dear ones, just take some nice deep breaths in. So, I want to share with you a sweet reminder, and it's something you have heard before, or a variation of it, which is, you are a divine being having a human experience. So you are a soul, a beautiful, bright, divine soul having this human incarnation. And as such, you are filled with wisdom. You are filled with light. There is this essence of you that is born of the heart of God. And so I invite you to connect with the greater expanse of all that you are. That's what my guides call it. They use that, that phrase instead of soul because they say the word soul has gotten so watered down. <laughs> I still use the word soul all the time. But in this concept, my guides use the phrase, the greater expanse of all that you are. And what they are referring to is your divine essence, your divine wholeness that exists beyond this earthly incarnation so it is a part of you, and you are a part of it. And I have always found that when I open to this concept, when I invite in the greater expanse of all that I am, there is a calibration, an attunement of sorts that takes place. It's an invitation to come into our brilliance, our light, our wholeness, our creative spirit. So even if you are having a hard time conceptualizing this concept, the angels understand. So I want to invite you to take a beautiful, big, deep breath in and allow the angels to help you connect with the greater expanse of all that you are, to feel the light streaming to you, remembering that you are a blessing here on earth, that you are precious, that you are born of the breath of God who has dreamed you into being. There is a beautiful phrase that Reverend Michael Beckwith has said. I first heard it probably in 2001 when I was in the middle of my awakening. And he said this. He said, you are not an accident. You are an on purpose from God. And when he said that, I started to cry. And it took me a while to understand why I was so deeply moved by this concept. And it is because for so much of my life, I considered myself an accident, not in the way that my birth wasn't planned or celebrated. I know that that's true for some people but sort of going back to a conversation we had in the Plus Size Diaries episode, I spent so much of my life feeling like there was something inherently wrong with me. And I recognize now that that is not uncommon. I think a lot of us live with that kind of existential pain. For me, 
a lot of it had to do with my journey with weight. I don't want this to be a sad story about my weight, so that's not my intention here, but something that I was told time and time again was my fault. I couldn't fix. And that really created a storm inside of me. And, and, and there were a lot of other factors to that. So when Reverend Michael said, you are not an accident, you are an on purpose from God. It was this holy moment for me. And he didn't say it specifically to me, right? There were several hundred people in the congregation that morning. But I felt like he said it to me. Like, wake up, sister. Wake up. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are not your flaws. You are not your wounds. You are not your fat. You are not your sad story. You are an on purpose. You are the breath of God that is incarnated as you. You are glorious and you are beautiful and you are here to bring more love into this world. And something really started shifting for me in that. And it is absolutely my truth now. And great thing, the wonderful thing about this is that if that's true for me, that is true for you. See, the beautiful thing about these principles is they are not selective. They either are or they're not. And so I say to you, you are not an accident. You are in on purpose from God. You are this beautiful, unique being having a human experience. And you are perfectly imperfect. You are flawed and I am flawed and we are all flawed. And as my guides love to say, we hate to break it to you, but you did not incarnate to be an avatar <laughs> in this lifetime. You have come here to experience this realm as a human being. And so you are a gift. You are precious. You see the world through the consciousness that is you. All the moments on the timeline of your life have brought you to this moment this moment that is filled with so much love for you. The angels honor your journey. You know, I think sometimes we think of this incarnation as, as somehow remedial school for souls, <laughs> but this is a pretty advanced journey. We go through the portal of amnesia and we forget who we are and we become this personality self that we identify as. And if we're fortunate, we get to awaken to the love and to the potential and to the inspiration and to the light that is here for us. And this is why I do what I do. I am here to help you open to the wisdom and the magic and the beauty of your soul. Because I am blessed in the work that I do and the gifts that I embody that I can feel it, sense it, and see it in you. I promise you it is a part of your beingness. And you don't have to do anything or become anything just as you are right in this moment, in this breath, 
into the next one. You are a radiant, beautiful blessing on this planet. So take a nice deep breath in and cozy on into this truth. And if you're not sure, you can just say, please let her be right. <laughs> let me be right about this. Let the angels be right about this too. And let the love come flowing in. Imagine right now, visualize, allow it to be so the divine golden light is flowing to you to help you calibrate, to help you feel better about yourself, to help ignite love within you for self. Self-love, self-compassion, peace within you, and take another nice deep breath in. And so I invite you to be in this love bubble. Just hang out here. Allow the love to soothe your physical body, to soothe your mind, to soothe your heart, to soothe your entire beingness. And you rest and the angels will be with you. And while you rest, we're going to go into story time. So I'm going to tell you some stories and we're going to have a wander through May of 1976 through the television screen of life. I tried to be so poetic there and it really didn't work. But that's okay because I hope that you're asleep by now. So cozy on up and we're going to flow right on into story time for you. So usually, when I do these TV guide issues, I break them up. So I might have a few episodes of something else in between. But honestly, I really wanted to go back to this issue. <laughs> and so these are going to be back-to-back -back episodes about this issue of TV Guide from May of 1976. So if you haven't listened to the last episode, I'm just going to give you a quick recap. I am perusing this issue of TV Guide from my memories of being 14 years old at this time. So we're in the bicentennial. Everything is red, white, and blue. Everything. <laughs> I'm over it. And I found myself in the last episode saying quite often, I don't care, I wouldn't care. So I'm remembering at that age stage, I don't think I cared about a whole lot. I was in that eye roll, <laughs> I'm too cool for this phase of life. At this point, I think we still have a black and white television. We may have recently migrated over to color. We don't have cable, so we are watching broadcast. We typically all watch together in the living room, although there is an additional television in the basement, but nobody really wants to go down there and watch it. I'm still sharing a bedroom with my sister, and we do not have a television in our room. And we're now coming up on Tuesday, so the last episode, we made it through to Monday night. And so now it is Tuesday. So usually if I was in school, which hopefully I was at this point, because I was getting ready to graduate the eighth grade, a big milestone in my life, I would be home and watching television by about 
And at 3.30, we basically had game shows and talk shows. And the talk shows at the time were Mike Douglas and Dinah Shore and Merv Griffin, but I don't remember watching Merv Griffin. So let's see who we have on Tuesday for our talk shows. So Mike Douglas, his co-host is Roger Moore, who I shared with you in the last episode I wouldn't have cared about. Um, and his guests are Lynn Redgrave, George Cooker, and actor Donnie Most. Now, George Cooker directed Gone with the Wind. 14-year-old me would not have cared. 60-year-old me, fascinated, and would have absolutely watched that episode. If I could find it on YouTube, I would probably want to go back and watch it now to see what he has to say. Actor Donnie Most, I just want to give you a moment, especially those of you who are of my generation, and let's do a little trivia. Do you remember who he is? He was on Happy Days. He was the red-haired guy on Happy Days, and I will say I cannot remember his character's name. I remember Potsy and Richie Cunningham and Fonzie, and I don't remember his character's name, and I'm not going to go Google it. So if you remember his character's name, kudos. You just beat me in 1976 television trivia. But I did remember that the actor played him, so I should get at least half a point for that. And then there's a lot of reruns. Marcus Welby, Happy Days, All in the Family. And there is a little billboard ad here for Dark Shadows, which was the vampire-centric soap opera, which I didn't watch. And I have to just quickly ask my friend who listens, especially to the TV episodes, my friend David. David, did you watch Dark Shadows? That seems like that would absolutely be your cup of tea. And and just so you know, because you guys don't know David, he loves horror films. So you can text me later and tell me if you are a Dark Shadows fan. And Merv Griffin, again, who I don't remember watching, had Loretta Lynn, Norm Crosby, Sammy Kahn, and then some people I don't know. Oh, Juggler Picasso. I was like, that can't possibly be Picasso Picasso. <laughs> I don't even think he was alive at that point. But it did catch my attention. So there would be an opportunity to see juggling on Murph Griffin. The next hour, we've got a rerun of Family Affair, which I think I already mentioned to you that I enjoyed, especially when I was younger. Mrs. Beasley, yes, the name of the doll. How many of you remember that? And Mr. French, who was the butler. And then we have Dinah Shore, who I remember watching a lot. And she has Carol Burnett. I would have watched that for sure. Anthony Newley, Jim Neighbors, and the Pointer Sisters. There would have been a lot of singing on this episode between Anthony Newley, Jim Neighbors, and the Pointer Sisters. Lots of music to be had. On Merv Griffin, a different episode, his Cloris Leachman, Don Rickles, and some people I don't know. I'm just not going to share with you the people I don't know because there's no fun in telling you them. Um, now, Partridge Family is in reruns here. It's in syndication. I don't remember if 14-year-old me was watching a lot of Partridge Family, but I will read to you the episode synopsis because it might make you happy. In this episode, there's an opportunistic motorist who turns a minor accident into a half million dollar lawsuit. I don't remember that episode at all. There's another episode of Mike Douglas on a different station. Uh, you know what? Let's turn this into TV trivia. It'll be fun. Let's see how good you do. So co-host is Gabe Kaplan. As we talked in the last episode, he played Mr. Cotter on Welcome Back, Cotter. 
And just as an aside for anyone else who grew up in Skokie or one of the neighboring school districts, how many of you had the substitute who looked just like Gabe Kaplan of Mr. Cotter? Honest to God, there was a substitute teacher who looked exactly like Gabe Kaplan, the frizzy hair, only his hair was brown and not black. And it was this event almost when he was your substitute teacher. And God bless his heart, here this guy was just living his life teaching and then the show Mr. Cotter comes along and now he has this whole other identity almost, you know, that not that he sold himself as Mr. Cotter, but you know, every kid is like, oh my God, you're Mr. Cotter. And now this poor guy has to deal with that all the time. But we liked him when he was a substitute because it seemed like a cool thing. I don't know. Okay. Back to this Mike Douglas episode. I'm rambling a lot. I know, but hopefully it's putting you to sleep. Guests include, here's our trivia question, Jim Backus. How many of you know who Jim Backus is and what was he known for playing? Okay, I'll tell you. First of all, he was Thurston Howell III on Gilligan's Island. That's right, yeah, he was Thurston. I know he was Mr. Howell, but is it Thurston Howell III? I think so. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And he also was the voice of Mr. Magoo, the cartoon Mr. Magoo. Um, Sarah Miles, I don't know who she is, I'm so sorry, singer Donna Summer, so we're now in the disco era, and, and this is why for sure I would have been watching, and members of Welcome Back Cotter, and they do not mention John Travolta, I still would have watched, Ron Palillo, who played Arnold Horshack, I'm terrified I remember all of this. <laughs> Robert Hedges. I do not remember his character's name, but I remember his afro. And Lawrence Hilton Jacobs. I don't remember his character either. I just remember Arnold Horshack. Okay, so I would have watched that. Later on, there are back-to-back episodes of Partridge Family and Syndication. Wow, there's three different, three different channels are airing three different Partridge Family episodes because it's in syndication. So one, Danny wins a racehorse that suffers from insomnia. I never like the Danny-centric episodes, just so you know. But in another one, Keith tries to trick Lori into arranging a date with the new girl in town. That would have been my cup of tea. I would have watched that episode. Can you believe it's still Tuesday afternoon? We have such a richness of things to look at. Okay, another dinosaur episode. Rod Steiger, David Frost, Charlie Pride, and the country singing duo of Dave and Sugar. Oh, I have no idea who they are, but maybe you do, because we didn't listen to country music in Skokie. Another Partridge Family episode. No wonder I remember all these episodes. It just must have been on all the time. And this one has Ray Bolger. And finally, we're out of the afternoon block into local news and all of that stuff, which in our house, we always had local news on for sure. And then the national news. And we were a CBS family. So in Chicago, the two anchors that we grew up watching were Bill Curtis and Walter Jacobson, and then, of course, Walter Cronkite for the evening news. So that was always on in our house. And as appropriate for the era, there is a page ad, a full page ad here for posters of the Fonz, John Travolta, or the Sweat Hogs, which would be all of the Welcome Back Cotter cast. And they're $2 each. And you would mail this to a place in Seattle, Washington. So just in case. 
Then there's more Partridge Family episodes. Wow, the world is awash in Partridge Family. And now we've got Prime Time. Finally, we've made it to Prime Time Tuesday. There is a Bugs Bunny Roadrunner special. Wow, they're doing like a lot of interesting stuff. So I don't know that we would have watched this, but Elmer Fudd is the giant while Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck each claim that the other is Jack in a takeoff on Jack and the Beanstalk. I have no recollection of that, but I'm sure at some point I saw it. There is a special about comic strips with Carl Reiner. I wouldn't have watched that because you know what was on? Happy Days. We were all about Happy Days in that era. So here's what this episode is about. Sure that he's lost touch with the girls, Richie seeks advice from that old lady killer Fonzie played by Henry Winkler. So basically, just your normal average Happy Day episode, which I would have watched. After that, you could choose from either Good Times, which I watched quite a bit. Thelma throws the Evans family into a furor when she announces her engagement to a young man with fine ambitions but few prospects but I would not have watched that because Laverne and Shirley was playing opposite of that, which I for sure would have watched. The promised presence of the wild Anne-Marie Polanski seems bound to make Laverne and Shirley's class reunion a success until Anne-Marie turns up in a startling new incarnation. Okay, so let's play a little supposition game here. What do you think she showed up as? It has to be a nun, right? She has to show up as a nun. I don't know that for sure, but I would, I'll bet you a nickel. <laughs> Let's bet a nickel that she shows up as a nun. But I would love to know what your theories are as well. And then at the nine o'clock hour, we have MASH which, of course, we were watching in our house. Let's see what era of MASH. So at this point, we have BJ Honeycutt and Colonel Potter. So the Army conducts a preliminary hearing to investigate Frank's charge that Hawkeye is guilty of mutiny. Like There were so many different iterations of that theme. Playing opposite of that was Policewoman. So Pepper poses as a streetwise con woman in order to infiltrate a gang of bunko artists who dupe elderly women out of their life savings. Uh, Pepper, of course, played by Angie Dickinson. I don't really remember watching that series. I don't think we watched that in our house. And then there's something called Vaudeville. Cab Calloway and his singing daughters, Chris and Cecilia, Norm Crosby, mime artist, Vito Scotti, and I can't name all of these other people because I don't know how to pronounce their names and I haven't heard of them before. So I'm sure that was some kind of special. One Day at a Time is on. I really loved that show because I really related to Valerie Bertinelli. I thought she was so pretty, and I always thought we would be friends. You know how you think about that in, at that age stage. I would have absolutely been friends with Valerie Bertinelli. So the theme for this episode, when David fails to leave for a business meeting he told Anne about, she apprehensively uses a pass key to enter his apartment, where she discovers... David and an attractive young woman in a state of dishabille. I, I had to take a moment. D-I-S-H-A-B-I-L-L-A. -L -L Would that be dishevelment? I mean, that's not what the word is, but is that what it means? Probably. And then at 10 o'clock, we have Switch, which we would have been watching with Eddie Albert and Robert Wagner, because my mom really liked that show. 
So Pete and Mac investigate the death of a young man who stumbled onto a big secret while stealing provisions from a heavily guarded mountain gun club. And then opposite of that, we had a Dean Martin special, and he's joined by a gallery of baseball greats and this roast of Joe Garagiola. Oh, I see. So it's not really a Dean Martin special of Dean singing. This is one of the Dean Martin roasts of Joe Garagiola. And if you are not familiar with what a roast is, it's when they have a panel come up and tell jokes about whoever they're honoring. So this is going to have Mickey Mantle, Hank Aaron, Yogi Berra, Stan Musial, Willie Mays. I for sure would not have been watching this, but if you are a baseball fan, this might have been really cool for you. And also the rookies is on, which we did not watch, so I don't have a relationship with that. So we're just going to skip right over that. So now we're into the late evening. There's a special on the presidential primaries, which my parents would have been interested in, but I wasn't. I came from a family that was very interested in politics, and it was lost on me. Unfortunately, I guess, or fortunately, I don't know. Anyways, so so election season was a big deal in our house. And then Johnny Carson has Elsa Lanchester, who I don't know who she is. Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman is on. And okay, so this brings us over to Wednesday. Wow, that took us a long time to get through Tuesday. All right, so again, I'm coming home from school probably at 3.30. You can choose from Match Game. I don't know how many of you remember that game show. Brett Summers, Betty White, Richard Dawson, Anitra Ford, and Greg Morris, and Charles Nelson Riley. That's a pretty good panel of 1976 celebrities. Mike Douglas, again, Roger Moore is the co-host. Tony Randall, Cindy Williams, and you might get really excited about this, Peter Frampton. 1976 Peter Frampton with the long hair. We thought he was adorable. And on Dinah... This is interesting, a show saluting People Magazine's second anniversary. So I guess People Magazine was launched in 1975. I did not know that. It features Telly Savalas, Margot Hemingway, Charlie Rich, and singer Phoebe Snow. And then another episode of Dinah's on a different channel. And this one has Zsa Gabor. Karen Valentine, Frankie Lane, and Abigail Van Buren, also known as Dear Abby. And Guy Lombardo and journalist Helen Thomas. And for those of you who are here in the U.S., she was a White House reporter for decades. Very, very um, accomplished woman. Merv Griffin has Jack Albertson, Frankie Valley, and the singing Kessler twins. I don't know who they are. Oh, Galloping Gourmet. How many of you remember him on PBS? Then there are many episodes of the Partridge Family to choose from. No shortage of Partridge Family episodes. And then we're going to flip on over to primetime. But wait, before we get to prime time, I just flipped the page and I have to tell you who is on Hollywood Squares, because this would have been good. Oscar the Grouch from Sesame Street. He's on Hollywood Squares. I for sure would have watched that, not because, you know, I was a, a total Sesame Street person. I was too old for it at that point, but Oscar the Grouch... Being on Hollywood Squares would have been pretty cool. Also, in other squares there for the game, Arthur Godfrey, Jim Neighbors, 
Karen Valentine, Pam Greer, Pearl Bailey, George Goebel, John Davidson, and of course, Paul Lind, always in the center square, of course, as well as a rerun of Welcome Back, Cotter. All right, so for prime time now, there's a pilot, a drama called Stranded. I'm not going to tell you, but basically people are stranded somewhere. Would not have watched it. Little House on the Prairie. Probably were watching that. The Ingalls family faces a financial crisis when bankruptcy prevents Charles' employer from paying him two months of back wages. And opposite of that was Bionic Woman. So I'm a little torn here. I did watch Bionic Woman. Jamie gets an exercise. Okay, we're not going to talk about this one. It's a little woo, and I don't think it's compatible with a good night's sleep. Not super scary. I mean, it's the Bionic Woman, for goodness sake, but I don't know. Jamie does something brave and helps people, is my synopsis for this episode. Also airing that evening is Canon, for those of you who remember that show, which we watched. So a little boy, these, all of these, you know, I should not read these. These are not good nighttime things. So again, something bad happens to someone in Canon, played by William Conrad, does something to rectify the situation. <laughs> then there is a Sanford and Son episode. It says when Lamott goes against his father's wishes and decides to get married, cantankerous Fred does his all to make the wedding day a disaster. I don't remember that episode, but I did watch Sanford and Son. Oh, this is why I would not have been watching it, because Beretta was on, and I liked the cockatoo. I was 14 years old, you know. Okay, again, I'm not going to read the synopsis. It does not involve Fred the Cockatoo, but again, something bad happens to people, and Beretta does what he can to fix the situation. Then there is something on at 10 o'clock. Flowers from Horseback, a special, The People's Republic of China, was toured by an all-woman delegation of U.S. representatives for two weeks ending in January of 1976. I wouldn't have cared. I was 14. <laughs> oh, wait, there's a show. First off, before, let me not race ahead. Okay. There's a show called Hawk. I don't remember this. Um, and Hawk is played by Burt Reynolds. I don't know the series. We went to watched it because Starsky and Hutch was on. That was a good show back then. And I thought David soul was cute. So that's what I would have been watching again. Something bad happens and they get justice for the situation. Um, something called blue night, which I do not remember with George Kennedy. Then in the later evening, we've got Johnny Carson with comedian Ed Bluestone, who I don't know who he is. There is a rather intriguing ad here. It says, do it yourself. Build your own home. <laughs> Cut high labor costs. Build it yourself. Start without a big down payment, low monthly payments while you build. Your land doesn't even have to be fully paid for. You get pre-cut materials, delivery blueprints, and step-by-step -step instructions. From Miles Home, the do-it-yourselfer's friend. I just have to say, that would be a brilliant HGTV show, right? You drop off all the supplies. Do it yourself. Build your own home. What could go wrong? What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> okay, so Mike Douglas, again, Roger Moore is the guest host. We have actors James Hampton. I don't know who he is. Chris Connolly and Marsha Wallace. 
Now, Marsha Wallace played the receptionist on Bob Newhart. That I remember. Dinah has Jason Robards Jr., Jacqueline Bissett, who was a real sex symbol at that point. I think the movie Deep, The Deep, had come out at that point, and she was a big deal. Ralph Waite, do you guys remember him? Who did he play? Let's see if you can remember. We'll do a little trivia. Ralph Waite. He was the father on the Waltons, and would then go on to brilliantly play Gibbs' father in NCIS. He was so good in that. Rita Coolidge, Alex Karras, and jazz pianist Barbara Carroll. That would have been a good episode. Again, a jillion Partridge Family episodes. And we'll go on over to prime time. The Waltons were on, which is probably why Ralph Waits was on Dinah Shore. So Grandpa's decision not to attend a war veterans reunion puzzles the family. The elder Walton has always basked in the memory of his days as one of Roosevelt's Rough Riders. So Richard Thomas, who played John Boy, directed this episode. There is a movie called Beyond the Bermuda Triangle with Fred McMurray. We would have watched The Waltons. Wait, you know what? I spoke too soon because Welcome Back Cotter is on. I would have absolutely lobbied for Welcome Back Cotter over The Waltons. So encouraged by Gabe Epstein. Okay, Epstein was the name of Robert Hedge's character. Now we know Epstein decides to become a veterinarian, but his confidence is shattered by a school counselor who scoffs at his career potential. Now we know. And then there's Carol Burnett, but I think this must be a repeat. But Maggie Smith plays a teacher who calls in the family to discuss their son's shocking behavior at school and joins the regulars in a musical finale about people behind the scenes in show business. And then there is a special called The Pursuit of Happiness, which is a news program, which I would not have watched. After Welcome Back, Cotter, we could roll right into Barney Miller, which was another show that we watched. So Barney's precinct appears to be a casualty of the city's financial squeeze as rumors spread that the station is closing and that store owners are paying protection money. And then at 9 o'clock, we can have the NBA playoff, which we did not watch in our house. The Streets of San Francisco. I think we might have watched it, but I don't remember having a relationship with it. But of course, that would be with Carl Malden and Michael Douglas. So I knew of the show, I just don't remember watching it. And Hawaii Five O, which we didn't watch. And then they have this ABC News special, American Schools Flunking the Test. So this would have been a Friday night. Nothing really interesting is on. We probably would have watched something. Maybe there would have been a movie on a channel somewhere. I don't know what we would have been watching, but nothing here excites me. So I don't know what we would have been watching. It would be a Thursday night. Nothing's terribly compelling once we get past Barney Miller and the Sweat Hogs. So I don't know what we would have been watching. My parents would have probably wanted to watch one of the news programs. So I might have been reading a book or something at that point or talking on the phone with a girlfriend. I don't know for sure. And we, we still aren't through Friday, nor have we even touched the TV Guide crossword puzzle, which I look forward to doing with you. So we might even have one more episode we're going to squeeze out of this issue. Maybe we'll piggyback that with a different issue. So 
I'm going to leave us here. Thursday evening with the mystery of what we would have been watching because as a 14-year-old girl, I was not the least bit enthusiastic with anything that was airing once the sitcoms were over. And I don't even know who's on Johnny Carson. Sam Blotner, a Costa Rica businessman. I have no idea what that was about, but he was Johnny Carson's guest. So there you go. A little snippet of television and my life in May of 1976. If you are of my generation, what would you have been watching? Would you have watched endless episodes of The Partridge Family? I would have. Because again, remember, we didn't have a VCR back then. There was no way to watch these episodes unless you were watching them on broadcast television. So you grabbed them when you could get them. You watched them when they aired. And I, sorry, as I was just about to close the page, I have to share with you a late night movie that is airing that caught my attention. It's called The Cloning of Clifford Swimmer. <laughs> right? How could I how could I walk away from that? Not that I would have watched it, but just as the laurel that I am now, I'm like, what on earth would this movie be about? Well, clearly cloning. Um, so it's from nineteen seventy four, a bizarre TV movie dealing with the repercussions of human duplication as experienced by a troubled executive played by Peter Haskell. (laughs) I'm not saying I would have watched it, but I just think it would be fascinating to see what a cloning perspective movie would be from 1974. So, there you go. And lots of other strange movies at that hour of the evening. So thank you for joining me in the Wayback Machine. And I would love to hear from you. Do you enjoy these episodes? I love making these episodes. I don't know why it brings me such happiness to remember those days, those moments in time. I think our consciousness is fascinating. We all store our memories differently, right? We all have different portals that wake up and help us remember experiences from years ago. And for me, television and food are almost always good portals for me to access my memories. Like truly, if someone said, what do you remember about your life in 1976? I might remember graduating from eighth grade, but I don't know that I would have a lot of other information other than the bicentennial to access. But I flipped through this old TV guide and all of a sudden all of these sweet inconsequential memories flow through, right? It's these aren't the biggest moments of my life. They're just sweet everyday memories. So my hope is as I share this with you, this shows up for you as well. So from my 14-year-old inner (laughs) Laurel and from the 60-year-old Laurel, I send you love and I wish you a good rest. And I look forward to connecting again soon and at some point we will finally finish up this issue of TV Guide. But for now, I wish you the sweetest of dreams. I am so deeply grateful for you. Thank you for allowing me the blessing of spending time with you. And we'll talk again soon. I love you. Thank you.